Hi everyone. Something a bit different this time. I was recently in London at the headquarters of the British Interplanetary Society. Whilst I was there, I happened to spy a model of a certain space plane that I've made videos about recently. I'm very pleased to say that they were happy to let me show it to you. So, here I am at the British Interplanetary Society, and here is HOTOL, or at least a model of it. So this is a publicity model that was made by British Aerospace back in the day, and by all accounts it travelled the world as British Aerospace tried to sell the idea of HOTOL to overseas buyers. This particular model was, um, when the project was cancelled, they were quite keen to get rid of it, so it was rescued from the scrap heap as it were, by one of the BIS's members. So this is where it resides these days. It's still a beautiful model, to be honest. It's clearly a display model. It's not got working parts or anything like that. But it gives you an idea of what HOTOL would have looked like. The model itself is about two and a half metres long, so that makes it about a one in 20 scale model of HOTOL. So it gives you an idea that this would have been a pretty large vehicle had it been built. Let's zoom in and I'll show you some of the features of the design of this vehicle. This is the business end. HOTOL had four RB545 engines, which were the air-breathing hybrid engines that I've talked about in a different video. They're arranged on the back of the fuselage. And this view up the vehicle actually gives you an idea of the original architecture that the builders thought. This is a launch vehicle, and what they were used to building was launch vehicles where the engines are on the base and then the tanks are on top of the engines, and it's a very structurally efficient way of building a vehicle. Unfortunately, it came back to bite them later on, and I'll, I'll mention that in a moment. These little engines here are the orbital manoeuvring engines, which enable the, the vehicle to move around in orbit once the main tanks were depleted. And these things down here are actually the vents for the open part of the cycle that drove the air compressor. The vehicle would basically be dumping hydrogen overboard because it was using more hydrogen than it could burn in the engines. So check out my other video on the HOTOL engine if you want to get a good idea of how that worked. So here's the thing that most launch vehicles don't have. This is the air intake. So it's a, a ramp air intake, two-dimensional design. Basically, as this vehicle is flying through the lower atmosphere, it's collecting air in order to use in the engine. And because it's a supersonic vehicle, it needs one of these air intakes, although it's a very simple one in order to keep the weight down. The air comes in here at supersonic speed, and when it hits this ramp here, you get a shock wave that forms across here, and then a second one. And this is actually a variable geometry component. So it's able to regulate the, the flow of the air into the engine. An interesting feature of HOTOL that you can use to tell the age of the design is how this bit continues back. This design doesn't actually incorporate the ramjets that were later added into the design, which you can see in some of the later configurations. The use of the ramjets was in order to burn some of that fuel that was being used as a coolant in order to generate some more thrust, which was a, a later innovation. So if you look at earlier designs, that's not there, and you end up with this, this ramp up the back of the, the vehicle. This little ramp you see here is something to prevent the boundary layer from going into the engine, so that's a common feature you'll see on supersonic air intakes. The other thing that's worth mentioning, of course, is that this can close so that none of the hot gases you'll get during re-entry would end up entering the, the engine or the vehicle and doing any damage. So, this is the layout of the vehicle. As I said earlier on, it is a vertical launch rocket. It's a normal rocket on its side. So, the engines are on the base, you've got the fuel tankage, and there's the nose cone up at that end. What the designers of HOTOL did was they moved the rocket onto its side, they put an air intake on the bottom, and they added wings. This made sense when they started out, but there were some problems associated with that. So. We've got the avionics up the front. This is where the hydrogen tank is. The oxygen tank in this configuration was here, and the engines are here. Now, when you're designing a vehicle that has to re-enter, the centre of mass of the vehicle has to be in a sensible place when you're coming into land, but it also needs to be able to fly at takeoff as well. So 
the process of, of balancing an aircraft is called trim, and Hotol had serious problems with this from the beginning. So most of the weight of the empty vehicle is the engines, and the engines are right back here on the base of the vehicle. And that's why the wings are all the way back here. Conversely, the largest volume of the vehicle is the hydrogen tank, which is up here. And hydrogen is not very dense. In fact, somebody once told me that if you have a bucket of ping pong balls, it weighs more than a bucket of hydrogen, liquid hydrogen, just to give you an idea. So the problem with this vehicle is that, yes, it's in balance at takeoff. Yes, it's in balance when it re-enters. But the problem is that as you take off and as you accelerate, what happens is you are burning hydrogen from the fuel tank. And as you burn the hydrogen, the center of mass of the vehicle, which starts off here, round about where the payload bay is, starts to move backwards. But there's another problem, which is that as you accelerate from a standing start up to about Mach 5 or so, the center of pressure, which is the aerodynamic lifting force on the vehicle, starts to move forward. It starts off being mostly on the wings, but as you start to become a hypersonic vehicle, the forebody of the vehicle starts doing a lot more of the heavy lifting. So Hotel had this enormous problem where the, the center of pressure moved forward, center of mass moved back, and in order to balance that, they had to have these enormous elevons, the control surfaces on the wings. And the trim problems became so bad towards the end of the program that a lot of the mass of the payload was actually being eaten away by the hydraulics that were used to drive the elevons. There was a running joke that Hotol was a system for delivering hydraulics to low Earth orbit, and it wasn't too far wrong. Now, of course, the way to solve this problem that was found later on was that you divide the hydrogen tank and you can take part of the hydrogen tank, put it aft of the wings and burn from the rear tank. That solves the trim problems. And of course, that is the reason why Skylon looks very different to Hotel. An interesting phenomenon that came from this configuration of the vehicle is the most distinctive thing about it, which is the forefin up here on the front. It's very weird seeing a tail on the front of a vehicle, but there are two reasons why you would want the forefin. The first reason is that it's a question of moment arms. If you want to have control of the vehicle using an active control surface, you could have a fin back here, but the moment arm is actually quite short from the center of mass. Whereas if you have the fin all the way on the front, the fin can be a lot smaller because the force needed to get the same amount of torque to manoeuvre the vehicle is smaller. So that's one reason for having the forefin. The other reason is that all of this heavy equipment is at the back of Hotel, and they were looking for absolutely any equipment that they could move to the front. And the mechanism used to drive this fin accounted for some of that mass. So by placing the mechanism at the front of the vehicle, they were able to better balance the vehicle. So that is Hotel. So I'd like to say a big thank you to the British Interplanetary Society for giving me access to this model and letting me film it. If you'd like to see more stuff on Hotel, then leave me a, a comment. Let me know what you think. And be sure to hit the like button because, as I'm discovering, likes make all the difference to a small channel. They really do. I am going to be producing more content about these old space concepts because I think they're fascinating. So uh, stay tuned for more of those.